All right, how many of y'all remember what kind of kick I'm on? I'm on the parable kick, right? So we're in Matthew chapter 13 tonight. We'll start there. And um, we're looking at the parable of the seed that actually grew the tree, mustard seed that grew a big tree where the, the birds came and nested in the tree. What does that mean? All right, let's see. The mustard seed, the smallest seed, produces a big tree that's big enough for the birds to make nest in. And then the next parable says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a woman. I already had a woman that was in my corner today already that, that, that took three measures of leaven and hid it in the lump. And the whole dough was actually influenced. So we, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a mustard seed. A little seed that grows a big tree that the birds make a nest in. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a woman who took three measures of leaven and hid it in the dough, and it influenced the whole lump. What in the heck does that mean? Well, tell me what he said. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Look, I've already quoted Matthew, so let's, let's um, we're going to go to Daniel chapter 4. Because I did a study on the tree and the birds. How many of y'all remember in the parable of the sower, the seed that fell by the wayside, what came and got that seed? Oh, the birds. And who were the birds identified as? Demons. Okay. So how many of y'all think you got some demons in your trees? And leaven represents what? Sin, right? Remember Jesus told them to... You, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, right? That a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. Good, thanks. I need help. So, so the scripture teaches us that leaven is sin. Now, the leaven was hid in the dough. What happens when you put baking soda or, or yeast in dough? What will happen if you don't put it in? What, your biscuits did what? Okay. They didn't rise, right? <laughs> so leaven represents sin. How many of you know that I believe that means you got to overcome sin that you were born into from the Adamic seed nature in your life? So there's two things that I think this parable's teaching us and this is just out of my heart because as I first read it I just looked at it for an hour and said what in the heck does this mean but as I got to really thinking about birds in the Bible trees in the Bible leaven in the Bible what do these things actually mean then it started coming to me and then I got a hoe to Daniel chapter 4. Jan Daniel chapter 4 with King Nebuchadnezzar gives us the whole revelation. And let me just say this. The parable of the sower was this. It was you getting born again and bringing forth fruit some 30, 60, and 100 fold. The parable of the tares and the wheat. Go wheat! Go wheat. All right, y'all remember that. That parable, I believe, deals with evangelism. The seed that's the wheat is the Christians. The Son of Man, God, uh, Jesus, plants the seed of Christians in his field, in the world. At night, an enemy comes, and who's the enemy? Satan. And he plants a little seed in the field. Those are Tares, that's exactly right. 
which are enemies of God. You remember? They, they said, well, uh, since there's uh, bad seed tares in the field, why don't we just go uproot them? He said, no, no, they all got to grow together. And at the end, at the harvest, we will separate them. Because I believe some tares are going to get converted into wheat. How many of you believe that? So, so I, I believe that I, I believe we can't kill them out because we got to get them saved. So we got to work on them. So I believe that the tares and wheat represents harvest. Now here comes the next two parables that Jesus gives us with three scriptures. It's 13, 31, 32, 33. And I believe that this, these two parables are representing growth, maturity, wilderness. I believe that every one of us have got to go through a wilderness experience because the wilderness is going to do something on the inside of you that nothing else can do it. That means your demon waging war against demons. That means waging war against uh, inherent sin in your spirit. Uh, by you going through things in life, you're learning about arrogance and pride and selfishness and greediness and, and all the things of the world that are pulling on you where you start to think that you're something. I believe every one of us has to go through a wilderness to take us to the next level that God has for us. For sure I know that Great, great men and women of God that are really called to do extraordinary things have to go through an extraordinary warfare to be equipped to do extraordinary things for God. And I believe that these two parables are teaching us that. And I think Nebuchadnezzar is a great, great witness for that. And if y'all are ready, I'm ready to jump into this thing. We're going to have a whole lot of fun, all right? And look, I'll take all the comments along the way. So if you got something, man, just wave me down and we'll all preach this thing together. We'll all do this scripture together. We'll have a whole lot of fun. We'll learn and grow and mature. Y'all ready? All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour concerning the vision, the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. And his thoughts troubled him. The king spoke and he said unto Daniel, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble you, Belteshazzar answered and said, My Lord, the dream be to them. I'm hoping that the dream is for your enemies. I hope it's for the dream that for the people that hate you. I'm just going to help you interpret it from the King James of what it really means. Verse 20. The tree that you saw, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto heaven... And the sight thereof to all the earth, everybody saw how great your kingdom was. The great Babylon, whose leaves were fair, and the, and the fruit thereof was very much. And in it was meat for all, everybody ate from it. Under whose the beast of the field they dwelt. And upon whose branches, here's the birds, the fowls of, the, of, of heaven, the birds of heaven had their habitation. Verse 22. And it is you, O king. Now, let me just step back just for a second in, in thinking about this scripture to help make sure I bring you up to date. King Nebuchadnezzar has a terrible dream. And in the dream, he called all of his leaders that interpret for him. First, he called the, the soothsayers and, and uh, those that normally speak to him about hard things, and none of them could interpret the dream. So then Daniel was called. Actually, I really believe that possibly they could have given him some insight because the, the dream is not really a hard, hard interpretation. But they were scared. Because they had just saw in chapter 2 Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego thrown in the fiery furnace. Let me just say, 
that sometimes people are impressed with the gospel. But there's a difference in conversion and impressed. Nebuchadnezzar saw God move. He said, it looks like one like the son of man walking around with them in the fire. They came out, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego came out of the fire. They were not burnt. Not one hair did they lose. Not even their clothes smelt like smoke. But Nebuchadnezzar still didn't totally believe. Now we're in chapter 3 and the Lord's going to take him to another level. How many of you know that the Lord's going to deal with your arrogance? The Lord's going to deal with your pride. The Lord's going to deal with you. Wait, there's going to come a day that's going to be your day. And it's going to hurt so good. Because I'm telling you right now, I've had my, my day, at least some days, and I'm telling the Lord right now, I'm down, boss. Whatever you say, brother, I'm for you, I'm with you. Let me remind you, I am nothing, and you are everything. And Lord, everything that we have here is because of you, Lord. It's the Lord thy God to give it the power to get wealth, Lord. It's just you, Lord. And so we give you all the glory and all the honor. Lord, we give you all the praise. Our eyes are on you. We know that heaven rules earth. And you're in authority. We are nothing. You are everything. And we are bowed before you, O oh great God. We honor you and worship you. That's where I'm at. Now, there was a time in this church when I first started. You know, when you're young, you're dumb. I didn't even want to say what else you got, but you. <laughs> when I was young, I spoke like a child. I acted like a child. But when I became mature, I put away. And this is how I put the childish ways. Yes, sir, boss, whatever you want to do. So, Lord, that's where I'm at. And now I'm saying, Lord, I know I'm still human. I know that sometimes you have to deal with me. But please be nice to me when you deal to, with me, Lord. I don't need a beat down. You remember those bully beatdowns on TV? I don't know what happened. Somebody might have got in trouble over that. So <laughs> I don't see them anymore. But you remember the arrogant people? And they would put them in the ring with a professional fighter because they had been bullying other people and beating them up. And they thought they were all of that because they were fooling with amateurs. And they jumped in the ring with a professional. Let me tell you something. You've been dealing with amateurs down here. Don't jump in the ring with him. He's a professional fighter. You get into the ring with Jesus, just start tapping out right then. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. So, so the, the, the place that we're at in the scripture now is, is that, that King Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream the soothsayers could not interpret. They called Daniel in. Daniel starts to interpret it, and now that's what Daniel was doing. I didn't want to, we only have a certain amount of time. I didn't have enough time to read the, the original vision and dream that Nebuchadnezzar had in the beginning of this chapter. So, so here, here we go. We're in verse uh, 22. So it is you, O king. It's you that has grown. And you've become strong, and your greatness is grown. And you've reached unto heaven, and your dominion to the ends of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Cut the tree down. I mean, you know, when you think you're something. Just stand up like you all that. And destroy it. But make sure you leave a stump, shout somebody. Because I'm, 
I'm trying to kill you, but I'm not trying to really kill you. I just want to kill the arrogance and the pride in your life. I want you to die. And I want Christ to come alive in you. So leave the roots in the earth. Even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. And I thought about that. All right, you leave the stump. That means that you don't kill them where the blood's totally gone out of them and the life is out, their spirit has left their body. You have just put them in a place where they could actually die to themselves. Because as long as you are living for you, you got to die. And when you die, then you will live. That's how it works. And he says, make sure you put a band of iron and brass around them. I thought that this is called spiritual lockdown, (laughs) spiritual handcuffs, spiritual leg irons, where in the spiritual realm, the command from heaven has been, make sure you put this dude on lockdown. Make sure you take away everything that he looked to to find his identity and his fulfillment. All of his success, everything that he built, everything that he thinks that he did within his own strength and own power where his reliance is on himself, take it away. And put him in spiritual handcuffs and lock him down for seven years and let the dew of the, uh, of the night be upon him every morning when he wakes up for seven years because we've left him still alive, but we've killed everything that he relied on and looked to other than God in his life because we've got to teach him. We've got to break him and we've got to teach him that there is none other but God in heaven and his reliance has got to be upon him. If you are relying on anything other than God in this place tonight or in this world tonight, I'm telling you that there's a command from heaven, a decree from the Holy One, the High One. The watchers, the angels are going to carry an assignment from heaven for you. Daniel said, the Lord has fallen on you, King Nebuchadnezzar. No, Jeannie Hollis, no early parole. You know, it's, it's been decreed seven years. In fact, I, the Bible says he took a human spirit out of Nebuchadnezzar and gave him a cow spirit. I don't know what a cow spirit is, but it's the first time I ever seen it in the Bible, but it's in here. Let me see if I can find it. (laughs) Where are we at? What verse? 24. And this is the interpretation, O king. This is the decree of the Most High. I mean, you know God's running this world. Don't ever kid yourself. Then don't tell me why. Well, what, it, why is he allowed? I'm just telling you now, he's in authority. He might even take one of the worst things that ever happened to you in your life and make it the best thing that ever happened. I'm telling you. So the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King. In other words, God's fixing a deal with you, old boy. That they shall drive you from men. And your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. We're going to take you out of your environment that you are comfortable in. In fact, your environment has become your God. And your dependence upon your substance that you think that you have created. Therefore, you worship yourself. 
And we are about to help you get right, O king. And they, I never have been able to, th I don't know who they is. I don't know if it's demons. I don't know if it's angels. Because the Bible said that when Jesus was led into the wilderness in Luke chapter 4 and um, Matthew chapter 4, that the Spirit of God, it was, it was the Holy Ghost that led him into the wilderness to wage war against the enemy, y'all remember? Hey, did Jesus overcome in the wilderness? Yes. How about Job? Did he overcome? Yes. How about Moses? Yes. How about Joseph? Yes. Okay. And they shall make you, they shall make you eat grass. And, and, and they shall wet you with dew of heaven. And this shall happen seven times and shall pass over you till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and he, God, gives it to whomsoever he will. The Lord raises up and the Lord brings down. Promotion comes from the Lord. That's why you can never kick doors in by the flesh and butt your way into life and take positions that you were not called by God or graced by God to have. And if you keep kicking things down and making things happen in the flesh, you find yourself frustrated. You find yourself irritated. You find things not working out right. You find you don't have what it takes to actually do the job because everything that you do, you've got to be called by God. You've got to have God's grace and God's wisdom and God's authority to be able to do the position that you take. That's why you're never jealous of someone that passed you up for a position. Because let me tell you something, God's big enough. And by the way, if they weren't called to that position, they passed you up. You watch and see how long they last. So you never, you never worry about somebody treating you, uh, uh, cheating you. Because if you got God's favor and blessing, you can't be cheated. Mag daddy, a schemer and scammer of them all, layman. Tried to scheme and scam Jacob 10 different times. And Jacob was a schemer himself. Had the favor on him though. Every time Laman would change the wages, they would mysteriously, the, the blessing would transfer to the other uh, uh, calves. Stripe or spotted. Man, I'm shouting. I'm telling you right now that you can't lose with the stuff we use. Your faith is in God. Your trust is in God. Heaven is ruling in your lives. Come on now. Our eyes are on heaven. The tree is touching heaven and the limbs are touching the ends of the earth. I'm getting my authority from heaven. I'm, I'm, my tree is grown and touch heaven. My limbs have grown and touched the ends of the earth. My authority is coming from heaven and it... Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, <laughs> look at your neighbor and say, go tree. <laughs> you are the tree. <laughs> Somebody said, well, where did the tree come from? It came from the mustard seed, remember? From a little tiny seed, you grew to be a gigantic tree. Oh, yeah, the demons are there. You got to overcome them, those, because that's the wilderness experience. That's what's making you great. Let me ask you something. You don't think demons are still alive because they don't have a purpose. You don't think God's not big enough? You don't think God's big enough to say one word and wipe out every demon in planet universe? Jesus said I could call legions. But my point is this, and I'm not glorifying demons. Please, man, I, I cast them out and I, I, I dislike demons. So please don't misunderstand me. 
What I'm saying is, is that God has a purpose for allowing demons to operate in our life. And that is we have to overcome them by the authority of God. That doesn't mean they rule. That means that we must take authority over them. And that's part of the process. It's part of maturing. It's part of growing. It's part of developing. Man, until you can overcome a devil, man, how are you going to overcome uh, your plate of food that you've stacked up this high? You got to overcome demons before you quit taking pills. Okay, I'm, I, I, all right. I can tell. It's time to move on. Whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom. So in other words, it was the, the decree from heaven commanded to cut the tree down, but leave the tree roots. Aren't you glad that there's still hope? Your kingdom shall be sure unto you. In other words, it'll be restored back unto you. After that, you shall have known that the heavens do rule. So here's the revelation for all of us in our life. The revelation is this. All we have to do is submit and depend upon God in heaven. We have to have faith in him and trust him and be loyal to worship, honor, and, and serve him with our hearts. And when we depend upon heaven, we're no longer independent, but we become dependent upon him. And all God ever wants is our heart. So as soon as we sincerely give our hearts to him, we die to self, we die to the world, we die to the, to the things of this world, and we look to him. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with things, because I like things, okay? Yeah, this thing is, is, is things can't be Watch your God. you got to possess them, Claire. and they can't, but you can't let them possess you. So that's the deal, that's a revelation about things. God don't care about things, he's got lots of things. The, the, the thing is, he's got them. They don't got him. He's got them. And that's the revelation. The key is, is God is first in our life. We love God more than anything. We're willing to do anything that God says. We will give everything that we have. If God says right now, give everything you have up, give it to the poor. Tomorrow we'll start giving it out to the poor. If that's what God says. Because God has us, not the world. That's the revelation. And that's what the Lord was given Nebuchadnezzar the revelation that after that, after you've gone through what you're about to go through, and you know that heaven is the authority, not you, but heaven, you have that revelation, then you will be restored back your kingdom plus. Because what happens to Nebuchadnezzar is, is not only does he gain everything that he did have, God is so good that he, he was given even more. When Job went through his wilderness experience, when you read the last chapter of the book of Job, he received twice as much as he ever had. So what am I saying? I'm saying as we grow and mature and develop and, and go through the wilderness, God equips us to be able to handle more in our lives. I don't know about y'all, but that's a place to shout. You better get excited. Now, Daniel gives King Nebuchadnezzar a little bit of counsel, and it's in verse 27. And this is what he tells King Nebuchadnezzar. He says, King Nebuchadnezzar, please heed my counsel. There may be a way for heaven to change their mind and their decree concerning you. If you break off your sins by starting to live right and your iniquities in other words iniquity is a sin of the heart it's, it's about you. It's, it's, it's selfishness. It's greediness. It's, it's, a, it's a sin with inside of your heart. So he says, 
in your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. In other words, if you start to be generous to people that have nothing, have no way to give you anything back for what you did for them, if you will do these things, it's possible. Shout some, look at your neighbor and say, possible. possible. Look at your neighbor and say, it's possible I might get out of this. <laughs> say, Lord, Lord, help me turn it around. <laughs> and so he says, it's possible that it may be a lengthening of your tranquility. In other words, you might have a little longer in peace before this thing comes upon you. Verse 28. And all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, 12 months, the Lord gave him 12 months, 12 months to start living right and to start giving to the poor. But you know what he said? Nah, nah. Nah, now nah, it reminded me of that goat that's eaten on the commercial. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. At the end, <laughs> so at the end of 12 months, look at your name and say, you got 12 months to figure this thing out. <laughs> All right. At the end of 12 months, King Nebuchadnezzar was walking in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon, and look what his mouth says. I mean, you know your mouth can get you in trouble with heaven. The king spoke, and he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power. Say my a little louder, king. And for the honor of my majesty. Oh my God, please start staying God a little bit more. Pride, come on, Miss Ann Hollis. Pride comes before fall. I agree with you, sister. Is that a promise? Okay, oh yeah, oh, it is. I mean, you know, God keeps his promises. Good ones and bad ones. While the word was in the king's mouth, I mean, you no, know, suddenly, there fell a voice from heaven. I mean, you know, I bet you the voice of heaven is louder than your voice. Saying, Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from you. Let me tell you how fast heaven can send a decree. Five times faster than an instant is offensed it. So heaven can send a command in offensed it. Somebody said fenced it. What is offensed it? It's five times faster than the instant. And they shall drive you from men and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field and they shall make you to eat grass as an oxen. And seven times shall pass over you until you know until you get the revelation, until you're broken, until you realize that you're nothing and God is everything, that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and he gives it to whomsoever he will. God is in authority. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagles and feathers, and his nails like the bird's claws. Woo! 
Moo! I think I'm a cow. Moo! Take, get that robe off me. I feel like chewing cud tonight. I can't wait to get on all fours. I got a cow spirit now. Woo! Oh, oh, great one. What are you doing in the backyard for three or four years now? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, we're laughing. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm telling you right now, chewing cud is bad for your teeth, and I quit. So. <laughs> and at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, verse 34, lifted up my eyes unto heaven. How many of you know that that's it? Just want you to love God with all your heart. And my understanding returned. How about... How about setting your mind on God and all of a sudden you start thinking right? And I bless the most high. I, I mean, you know, when blessings go up, when praises go up, what happens? Oh, come on now. So he says, I blessed the most high and I praised and I honored him that lives forever. I mean, you know, he wasn't thinking about himself now. My kingdom, all that I have built. Now he's saying, I praise and honor him that lives forever. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, not mine. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. And I worship him and serve him and honor him and love him and adore him and bless him with all my heart. My eyes are on you, oh great God. Never again do I need to eat grass. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. In other words, I'm nothing and you're everything. And he does according to his will in the army of heaven. In other words, he's the boss and I'm not. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hands, he has all authority, or say unto him, why are you doing this? I mean, you know, you can't question God. You can question him because, um, you know, with an arrogant spirit, Jesus said, my father, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? I'm not saying that at times that we don't go through emotional things because we all do. And God knows your heart. He'll meet you where you're at. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you arrogantly are pointing your finger at God and shaking your fist at him, that's a different spirit. At the same time, my reasoning returned unto me. I mean, you know, I'm not thinking like a cow anymore. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and the brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven whose works are true and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to humble so tell me what you think give me some feedback what you think Steve what you think about Nebuchadnezzar what you think about heaven Ordering a decree. I think I think uh, pride become comes before fall, and he was so prideful that uh, he thought he was all that, you know, in a bag of chips. He thought that uh, that he was over all this, and I own this, and I own that, you know. And then pride came before fall, and then he fell. And then uh, once he got brought to his uh, on all fours, you know, eating grass like a cow and everything with his uh, with his hair. With his hairs uh, were grown like an eagle and feathers and his nails like bird's claws, he started realizing, you know, what what he did wrong. And then he wanted to worship God. He probably didn't want to eat uh, grass anymore, you know. And 
Steve, do you ever want to use lose your human spirit, become a cow spirit? No. Okay, all right. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Come on. What do you think? Bah! <laughs> I don't want to be no cow. That's Brother, you don't even make a good cow. That was that was a bad move. <laughs> that was God's gonna get your attention. A lot of times we think, well, why are we going through this? Why are we going through that? God's just trying to get your attention so that you'll put your mind on him and not on yourself and not on other things. So he, there is a way to get your attention, hallelujah. Brian, what you think? Well, you know, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And, you know, the Bible says that we can't make ourselves one cubit taller or one hair black or white. We can't even guarantee our next breath, amen. And so we need to be humble in the Lord and remember that everything good comes from above. Amen. What did you get from this? Sometimes it takes losing everything to gain God. Yeah. How come? Why? Why? Why are we so hard-headed and so hard-hearted? It's just how humans are. And we have to give him everything in order to have it. Man, that is some kind of precious. <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes we have to go to extremes before we really realize the true purpose of life. How I many of you say that I really want to live the true purpose of life? Man, I, I just really, if that's you, could I just pray for all of us? Could we get this podium out of here? And there's, there's an anointing up here on the altar where from heaven there is, there's an open heaven that comes down onto this altar right here. I can literally feel it. And so when you get out of your seat and you come under the spout where the glory comes out, I believe God's going to do something great in all of us. So if you say you want God tonight, and I know you're many, yeah, most of you are saved, if not all of you, please get out of your seat. Come down here with me, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm here. We're just going to ask the Lord to help us all because I'm not thinking that I'm not thinking that we have everything within ourselves to even live for God because we don't. We need God. We need the Lord. What you think, brother? We need the Lord. Yeah. Just let the Lord move right now. I'm just waiting for a second on God, okay? Pastor John, what do you think, brother? You know, I've never had to chew grass, but I've had to chew my words. Had to chew my feet. Um, man, we just got to give it to him. It is him. It is him 100%. I've tried everything. I've tried every way. It is only in Christ. It is only knowing that he is the creator and sustainer of everything. That we have anything. Because in us, we just don't have, We lose it all, man. And you know what? There's, there's nothing on this earth that is worth the presence of God. There's nothing. It's his presence that changes me. It's his presence that gives me compassion and hope and love. It's his presence that heals. And we just thank you, Lord. Mm. Wilderness. What was the counsel of Daniel? Daniel said, stop the sin in your life that's coming from the arrogance. Start being a giver and not a taker. And if you do that, King, man, it's possible that heaven might change their mind because heaven gave him 12 months until finally when he with his own mouth started saying how great he was and, and everything he had that he had done 
And then heaven said, today's the day, O king. Today's the day of your salvation. I love you so much, I'm going to let you be a cow for a while. I'm going to let you move because I love you, Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to take everything that you have, that you've measured your worth. Because you've measured your worth to things. You leave me no alternative but to take the things from you because you don't understand that if you don't got me, you don't got nothing. And you're being deceived by the birds in your nest that are telling you that you're this and you're that and you're great. But the birds have lied to you. The demons have lied to you. The world has lied to you. The voices that are around you that are speaking in your life are lying to you, King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to have to do something drastic in your life to open your eyes. I'm going to have to take it all away. But the good news is I'm going to leave a little roots. I'm going to leave a little stump. Because one day, you're going to get it. Lord, let today be the day that we all get it. Say with me, say, Lord, Lord, let today today be the day day of salvation salvation of me me getting it. it. You You are Lord. There is none besides you. Heaven rules. The dominion of this world is ruled from heaven. Lord, from generation to generation, you are God. There is none beside you. I praise you. I worship you. I adore you. Lord, I take my eyes and I put on heaven. On heaven. better look up Uh, all right now I'm still seeing some look down better look up better look up heaven here's the revelation if you ever take your eyes off of heaven and put your eyes on anything other than God you stand a good chance to become a cow. Eat more chicken. (laughs) So Lord, help us. Because Lord, we have habits. We have strongholds. We have addictions and bondages. In our lives, some of us are addicted to all kinds of things of this world. And say with me, say, Lord, I am it. I can't overcome them by myself. So, Lord, I'm looking to you to deliver me and set me free right now in the name of Jesus. Now, let me say something very, very important. You may have some strongholds in your life that have got you in bondage. But you got to look up. Even in that bondage, you got to look up and you got to say, God, I worship you. I love you with all my heart. I'm telling you, God, I can't do it in my own strength. I've tried, and you know my heart. So I'm asking you, God, from my heart to deliver me and set me free so that I can serve you, Lord, freely. I'm asking you, Lord, to do a miracle in my life. So what I'm saying is, is in your striving, in your struggle, look to God. Because your God will help you. 
Sometimes we have to walk through some things. But I'm telling you, you keep your eyes on the Lord. You keep crying out. You keep calling out to the Lord. All of those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will ultimately, and I don't know why, sometimes he takes a little time in certain areas. Sometimes he uses things we walk through to teach us things. And I, I don't understand all the counsel of God. But what I do know is, as long as I keep my eyes on him, even in my addiction, The Lord will have mercy. And the Lord will keep working with you. Now, I know there'll be some preachers that say, oh, you no good, wretched sinner. You're on your way to hell and all that. I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that. I believe that even Nebuchadnezzar had 12 months to get it right, okay? I believe that God works with us because he realizes we're human beings. Now, I believe there comes a time when you should have reached a certain age and you're still pooping on yourself. Now, I'm going to have a problem with the grandchild I, look, brother, if you're old enough to tell me you got poop in your diaper, brother, you are old enough to make it to the toilet. So that, I can't. I'm telling you right now. And Jeannie would say, what? I said, I don't change diapers. I take them out to the hose and I rinse them off no matter how cold it is. Why would you do that? I said, because I would tell you what. When that cold water hits, hits a, hits a dude. <laughs> He says, you know, I'm thinking I want to change my ways. <laughs> so, Lord, bless our precious people tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this family. Thank you for all that you're doing in our hearts and lives, God. Lord, we're trying to figure it out, God. Help us, Lord, to be everything you've created and called us to be, Father God. Lord, we want to be earth shakers, history makers, devil chasers, God. We want to be world changers, oh great God. Lord, we want our tree touching heaven, Father God, and our limbs touching the ends of the earth, oh great God. Now, Lord, your authority coming from the top of the tree from heaven into the limbs throughout the whole earth. Now use this body for your glory, for your kingdom. Bless this church, Miracle Place Church, and all of its members, God. Bless all of our people worldwide. Bless us now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And all the family says, Amen. Amen. Have a great, great night. Go wheat. Go tree. Yes.